see it? Yes. How did it look? Okay? It was beautiful. Like the 4th of July. It was something. Your eyebrows got singed. Yeah? Better get going. Everything's going great, baby. We're getting all the breaks. Yeah. There's 500. That ought to hold you till the big day. I guess so. Sam, I'll need some new clothes. You'll have plenty when you collect our jackpot. I'll need them right away, Sam. The widow has to wear black. Your bus out. Look, when you come to join me, take a plane, huh? Fast. With that much money, I'll travel by armored car. Don't forget to tell me how things are going here. Write to me. General Delivery, Washington, D.C., Sam Johnson. That's a dull name you picked. It's okay for now. You can pick a better when we get back together again. Baby, I'm going to hate being away from you so long. Don't think I'm going to enjoy staying here alone. It'll be tough for a few weeks for both of us. But it's worth it for what we got coming up, huh? It's all going to be different with us. We'll have everything we want. New Year's Eve, Mexico City. We'll be beginning a new life, Sam. Goodbye, baby. When they tell you I'm gone forever, don't you believe it. And remember... No tears. Sam, I'll eat popcorn at the funeral. Don't you worry about that business tonight. Pull a stump like that, I must be daffy about you. So I am. This will work out, and I'll have you. No time deal. I will, won't I? Huh? Sam, never doubt me now. Don't forget to write me. Every day. husband of yours get off all right? Sam will soon be far away for a long time. It's a happy thought. Forgive me for getting me down here at this awful hour. I couldn't wait to be with you. Hungry? No. I just want to relax and enjoy myself. Let's get going. Don't tell me why. Don't you trust me? I'm not Sam. No, you're not anything like you. That's why I love you. Don't start counting me until you're ready to let me know what the deal is. All right. Sam double-crossed me right from the start, spending all that money on me and making me think he was loaded. It certainly isn't money that makes you like me. So I married him found out that he'd spent all his money putting on a show to land me. A two-bit used car salesman. And I was stuck with him. Doing my own housework, cooking for him. Tell me things I haven't heard from you before. Finally, I got fed up and told him I was going to leave him. Well, I've heard of Sam. I'd get him pretty desperate. 
So after a couple of days, he came up with an idea. You make men think things, don't you? A couple of hours ago, down at the Sunset Beach Hotel, a room registered to a Mr. Sam Grover caught on fire. And a body went hurtling all in flames out the window. After that, all they could have possibly found was a body so badly burned and smashed that they'd never be able to tell who it was. Except that it had on Sam's watch and ring. Do you realize what you're in on, Edna? Whose body was it? Just a corpse Sam got from an undertaker and some sort of deal. Those used car dealers even taking stiffs as trade-ins now? <laughs> Sam's been holed up in that hotel room for three days to set the scene. I don't think I like any of this. You told me Sam was away on business. He was sweet. With a $50,000 profit. $50,000? Sam's life insurance. Tonight, Sam Grover ceased to exist. That's why he went away to disappear. He's going to be waiting for you someplace. To join him with that 50 grand. And live happily ever after. Only you're not going away. But I am, Ray. I'm going any place you want to go. I'll be right there. Uh, Mrs. Sam Grover? Yes. Your husband here? No, no, he isn't. Then I'll have to talk to you, Mrs. Grover. Oh, police? Come in. Uh, when do you expect your husband? Well, I don't exactly know. He hasn't been home in several days. Why, is he in some sort of trouble? I don't know. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to come down to headquarters with me. Well, why? What's the matter? I'm not at liberty to say. I'll wait while you get dressed. Okay, check on it. Sit down, Mrs. Grover. I understand you haven't seen your husband since Monday. That's right, I haven't. What's this all about? Has Sam done something? Any idea where we could find him? He just left without saying where he was going. You and he have some trouble? A little argument. Nothing serious. Well, was it serious enough that he might have moved into a hotel? I guess so. He left home mad and I haven't heard from him since. Please, whatever's happened, tell me. Ever see these before? I don't know. They, they look like my husband. The watch I gave him our first Christmas together. Where'd you find these? A room registered to Sam Grover at the Sunset Beach Hotel caught on fire. These were on the body that plunged through the window into the alley. He's dead? <sighs> we can go on with the questioning later if you'd like to lie down for a while, Mrs. Grover. You think Sam was murdered. That's why you brought me here to homicide. Please, I want to know now how it happened. Can you think of any reason anybody would want to kill him, Mrs. Grover? No, no. Sam didn't have any enemies of any kind. Are you sure there's nothing that you can tell us? Sam was never mixed up in any trouble of any kind. I, I can't understand. I just can't believe it. They couldn't get any clear prints. Look, you must have some reason to think that this was done deliberately. Now, if somebody's responsible, I want them caught. Mrs. Grover, we haven't any evidence. There's nothing for us to work with if you can't give us some leads. All I can figure is an accident case. Well, that's all I can say to the coroner's inquest. Accidental death. What a lovely creature. Is that your daughter? My granddaughter. She's uh, studying uh, surgery in Switzerland. Oh. Naturally, for a while, they had me really desperate. Murder that had messed up the whole thing. But it came out all right. I think I gave quite a performance. 
<laughs> Wish you could have caught me at the morgue. I was really terrific. Must have been kind of a cold house to play to. Well, for that much money, you could put on quite an act. It was awful. Having to look at some poor, burned, broken body and say, Yes, it's Sam. I know it's Sam. I'm still shaking. Now I've got to see you. And, of course, we realize your great loss, Mrs. Grover. Believe me, you have the deepest and sincerest sympathy of ourselves personally of the company. But in your bereavement, it may fortify you somewhat to know that there are no financial worries to add to your grief. That's why I've come at this time. It was very good of you. Your husband left you quite well provided for with his insurance. Now, if you'll just sign these applications, please, Mrs. Grover. I didn't realize there was any insurance that came to me. I handled the policy for Sam. He originally took it out with his son, Tom, as beneficiary. Then sometime after he married you, he changed it in your favor. Sam often spoke of doing that. I told him that any money I received from his death wouldn't give me any possible happiness. The company isn't completely satisfied with the police report. The police said Sam evidently did what people most often do in the panic of finding themselves trapped and burning. He, he jumped out the window. Certainly appears to have all the elements of pure accident. We don't know. We just have to find out. But if the police accepted it as an accident... We aren't always satisfied with the theory the police accept. It's more or less of a formality investigating any case where there's possible doubt. It's agonizing to think that there is any possible doubt. It's been so difficult for me to resign myself even to the fact of Sam being dead by this horrible accident. But in any case, Mrs. Grover, you'll receive the money. But before we settle, I'll have to do a certain amount of investigating. I understand, of course. My report ought to be ready within a week, uh, unless there are disturbing difficulties. You'll hear from me. All right. I think you'll like it here. Room's ready, Mrs. Peek, if you want to show the gentleman. It's nothing grand, Mr. Johnson, but it's, uh, it's comfortable and quiet. That's about all I ask. I and my other two roomers are away at work all day. There's no one around except Hilda, and she won't bother you. That's fine. Frankly, the real reason I'm in Washington is confidential. You know. <laughs> we certainly do know. The rest of us here have government jobs. We never ask questions of each other. Everybody minds his own business. Well, I guess I came to the right place. <laughs> well, come along. Oh, hello, Tom. Come in. Thanks. I hoped you'd come when you heard. I'm glad you're here. Are you? It isn't the same without him, is it? You haven't been around for a long time. I'm sorry it had to be these circumstances that brought you back. I want you to know that I don't hold anything against you for coming between Dad and me the way you did. I hope not. There's no reason to. It, it was all a misunderstanding. If having you gave my father a couple of years of happiness, that's fine with me. I tried to make him happy, Tom. I like to feel that I did. And believe me, I don't hold any resentment about Dad changing the insurance policy so you get the money. Oh, I never wanted him to. I didn't know anything about it until yesterday. He wanted to leave you well fixed, and he did. You'll be all right. I'm going to give you your share, Tom. I'm sure Sam would expect that. Thanks, Edna. I don't want any of the money. I'll get along okay on my own. I want to be sure. Did you get married yet? I was going to, but well, this postpones that for a while anyway. I think your father would want you to go along the way you planned, just as though nothing had happened. I can't now, with this hanging over me. Well, it's not a family scandal, Tom. Your father died in a fire. Only I'm not so sure it was an accident. Well, how can you say that, Tom? I know this hits you very hard. It, it does me too. But we must keep our senses. The police and the insurance company have investigated and they've accepted it as accidental death. I'm not making any accusations against anybody. But I'm going to find out if there was anything criminal about my father's death. And if there was, I'm going to make sure that something's done about it.
I don't know what I figured I could find out from her. Just a wild idea that I could tell something by the way she's taking it. She's smart. If she'd been putting on a big crying act, I'd have been sure she was faking to cover up something. Are you going back to the police? Doesn't seem any use in talking to them or the insurance people anymore. Just my suspicions. Tom, what about a private detective? There's one who does some work for my boss sometimes. He, he seems to be pretty good. He probably costs too much. He's sort of eccentric. He may take the case cheap if it interests him. That isn't exactly what we've been saving our money for. I want to do all I can. I know your father meant a great deal to you. I can't just stand still and take it the way he died. Maybe we will talk to that investigator friend of yours. Yes? Mr. Stewart, are you busy? I'm most certainly going to be. This is delightful. You're here at last. My dear, you're being followed, did you know? Mr. Stewart, this is my fiancé. Your fiancé? How do you do? How do you do? You depress me deeply, Marilyn. However, I shall subject the young man to a thorough investigation and advise you whether to proceed with matrimony. Tom needs your help, Mr. Stewart. Really? I think I'm qualified to help you out of any trouble. Well, do come over and sit down. I am now ready to be helpful. I guess, first of all, I better tell you that I can only afford about $50. I'm very glad you did tell me that first. A sudden lethargy has descended upon me. You may now tell me, young man, what troubles you $50 worth. Go ahead, please, Tom. Okay. Mr. Stewart, the other night, my father, Sam Grover. Sam Grover? I find I must apologize for my earlier levity. And you are here, obviously, because there is some question in your mind concerning the circumstances of your father's exit from this pleasant little world. Uh -huh. Only it isn't so pleasant to me right now. And I don't think it was any accident. Which is a direct divergence from the theory accepted by our esteemed police department. I join you in doubting their infallibility. I have a hunch my father was murdered. I imagine we've finally got around to why this young lady brought you here. A motive might be of some use. Frankly, I haven't much to go on, Mr. Stewart. Just my suspicions. My father's wife, his second wife, she's not my mother. Yes, I, I've seen her pictures in the Daily Gazette. Dad's life insurance pays her $50,000. Mmm, $50,000. A nice round sum. I think we may well consider Mrs. Grover our number one suspect. And you have indeed a motive, laddie. I am intrigued by the possibilities. I shall give the matter definite consideration. I guess you'd want the $50 now. Not a franc till I come up with something tangible. I shall get in touch with you when I have something stimulating to report. You're being awfully kind, Mr. Stewart. Yes, I suppose I am. Goodbye. Goodbye. of a post office is this. Right here in the home headquarters of the U.S. Postal Service, a man comes around faithfully every day and you don't turn up a postcard or anything for him. Not even a bill. Nothing for Sam Johnson. Nothing, huh? Thanks. Hello. Yes. Sam? Where are you? I'll call you back. Someone's coming.
were you? Huntington Stewart, one of the better private investigators. How'd you get in here? The doors of most homes are very vulnerable to pass keys. I felt that our little uh, telephone conversation entitled me to guest privileges. I don't recall any telephone conversation with you. It was rather brief. I, I didn't allow you to be very communicative. I'm awfully afraid I hung up rather rudely right after you said, Sam, where are you? I was so startled. Voice from the dead, I... I didn't know what I was saying. You said just the right thing. Your answer was very gratifying. You don't look like the type to play telephone tricks on widows for your amusement. I suppose it does need a little explanation. Yes, it does. I was engaged by young Mr. Tom Grover to investigate his father's untimely demise. I shouldn't think an upset son's wild ravings would inspire anyone with your experience. Well, frankly, the boy's problem doesn't interest me particularly. Really? What would? Money. Afraid you've come to the wrong place. Let's not forget, Mrs. Grover. I am aware your husband is alive. You have a problem. You. I admit I misjudged you, my dear. In a case of this sort, one's first suspicions are apt to be rather nasty. You know, I found that out. People seem to get the idea I killed Sam. So I could collect his insurance. I fell into that error. Except that I didn't feel you could have accomplished it alone. I wouldn't even have thought of it. In pursuing my false premise, I regretfully announced that I stooped to employing the basest procedure of my profession. And that must be pretty base. It's almost always a dull business, and your case was no exception. I was quite bored following you and that young man. Any particular young man? That handsome chap. I, I believe his name is Ray. So you've seen Ray and me together? That's not enough. My dear, it's quite sufficient to have made it seem likely you and your young man contrived Sam's death, making it look like an accident so that after you'd collected the insurance, you and the boyfriend could go away together. You'll never find anything to implicate Ray. Possibly not. Getting any material evidence against you two would have required some physical effort on my part. And I'm a lazy creature. Besides, character traits are so much more intriguing. I'm sure people's minds are more interesting than their fingerprints. Absolutely. I find we have one thing in common. You and I? You and I. It takes money to make us happy. Money isn't everything, they say. And speaking of money, I possess certain priceless jewels of information. Priceless? The very for a uh, close association with this Ray fellow would elevate eyebrows among the insurance and police people. If you really have an evil mind. A very valuable asset in my profession, dealing with the people that I do. No doubt. And the revelation that your husband is actually alive. And you knew it when you signed the insurance claim would inevitably result in your conviction for fraud. I have a feeling you're not going to tell them. No. Neither my client nor I have anything to gain by your being sent to prison. I'm not hollering help yet. You're no position to holler. Personally, I hope very much that you get the money. The full amount. That's what I've been waiting for. And I feel definitely that the son Tom should share in the benefits from the insurance. I wondered how you were going to put the proposition. Didn't Tom tell you that I offered him some of the money and he refused to take any part of it? Yes, but then you could say how much. Now I'm in the position to name the amount. How nice for you. I feel that 5,000 would be a fitting sum. The lad wants to get married. I suppose you realize I won't get any 5,000 until the insurance company pays off. Up until that point, my client and I shall be paragons of patience. You'll keep in touch with me, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Another week or so, and then you can expect me. Fair enough? 
very soon. I'm sending you a nice gift package of California fruit, which you must miss terribly back there. You see, I'm thinking about you. So take it easy, old boy. I, I know you must be nervous, so am I. Only there's nothing to worry about. But please, Sam, don't get upset and do anything crazy, please. Just stay planted there, lay low a little longer. And as soon as I get the money, I'll be on my way to you. Love, Edna. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Morning, Yola. I guess you needn't bother to take your hat off. I don't understand. The landlady asked me to tell you she wouldn't need you any longer. Sorry. Why, I wonder. Mrs. Peake never complained of my work. I guess it's because she's going to quit her own job and take care of the house herself. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. I'll get another position, a better one. Mrs. Peake owed me for a week and a half. Did she leave my pay? Oh, your pay? Uh-uh. Not with me. Well, that's funny, too. She knows she owes me. Everybody else gone for the day? Mm, nobody will be here till evening. No use of you hanging around. I'll remind Mrs. Peak. You can pick up your money tomorrow morning. You've got a lot of nice, solid, substantial stuff here. Yeah, my wife picked it all out. She didn't want to be around this morning. I think this business would embarrass her. Would a loan of $500 make you happy? $500? I was thinking about a lot more money than that. Living room, dining room, kitchen, four bedrooms upstairs. That's a lot of furniture. Well, we allow about 10% on our assessment. I'll be glad to recommend a loan on that basis to the company. Okay. It's only for an emergency anyway. If you'll be down in the office this afternoon, we'll have the cash for you. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh, you'll notify us if you intend to move the stuff. Oh, don't worry about it. The stuff will be here. It isn't going no place. Okay. Give me the number of the American Airlines. This is what you wanted, isn't it, Tom? Uh, thanks, Edna. If there's anything more of his you want, you'll let me know, won't you? Yeah, I will. The insurance money should come through in a day or so, and then everything will be all right, won't it? Nothing will ever be all right until I find out what really happened to Dad. See, what is this? Just how much money do you think you can get out of me anyway? I told you, I don't want any money from you. Oh, don't play so innocent. Sure, that's what you told me. Very upstanding and honorable. And then you send that Huntington Stewart around to gouge me good. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course about. not, you wouldn't. I talked to Stewart about seeing if he could find out anything about my father's death. That's all. Stewart told me today that he hasn't anything on you. Or has he? You better go, Tom. You're being ridiculous. Maybe I am, but I don't think so. Tom, the, the pipes. Don't forget the pipes, Dan. Tom, let's not fight anymore. Now that your father's gone, why can't we be friends? Huh? Oh, oh, oh. You lied to me. You told me you didn't have anything on it. Now talk. I can't explain with you throttling my vocal cords. All right, now what do you know that's worth money to Edna? I find it impossible to express myself intelligently under the constant threat of your violence. I sit down. Okay, I'm waiting, Stuart. Do you know uh, Ray Belden? No, who is he? A handsome young friend of Edna Grover's. I might say a very good friend. Now we're getting somewhere. When I was able, by my Machiavellian machinations, to learn of their association, 
Go on. It seemed quite possible that Edna and he had conspired to do away with your father. So they could have each other and plenty of money besides. That's it. We've got it. That was my conclusion. And may I rise now? I should like to repair my appearance. Better put this away before you carrot him, too. Why didn't you tell me about this guy Ray before? Why didn't you tell the police? I didn't tell the police because the deed seemed to have been accomplished so adroitly there was no evidence. All we could possibly prove was motive. I had what I believed was a better plan. Yeah, sure. Use what you knew to put the bite on Edna and make yourself some money out of my father's death. My dear boy, my plan is for you to receive the benefit from the insurance. You think I want any part of the proceeds from my father being murdered? I quite see your point. A very admirable attitude. I don't like you cutting yourself in either. Lay off, Edna. I've got my own ideas about what to do with her, her and that guy. I suppose it's useless to advise you against any aggressive action. In my book, they kill my father. I had an intuition you'd lose your head when you learned about Edna and her boyfriend. Why don't you let me have a chat with this Ray? Because I'm going to have a little talk with him myself. As an older and wiser head, I must warn you that pursuing this any further will only be disastrous to you. Maybe. I'm thinking mostly about how disastrous it's going to be to Edna, her friend Ray. Open. Don't be silly, darling. There's nothing to be scared of now. This is our last moment together for three long weeks. You stick around for a while? Well, we still ought to play it safe, Edna. Eh? Let's not let anything spoil it all now. We'll have the rest of our lives together. I wish we were going to be married right away. I hate leaving alone tomorrow. It was your idea we'd take off separately and meet later. It's really smart of that way, Edna. Right now, I wish I hadn't even thought of it. Maybe it isn't so smart. Maybe you won't come to join me. I'll be following right behind you. Frisco, then Diamond Head, and the boat that docks one week after yours. I know he is even home with you. Um. <clears throat> Edna, I need some new clothes and uh, have to get by until I meet you over there. Of course, Ray. I'll write you a check. I hate taking money from you. Get used to it, Lamb. It offers you quite a future. I'll put on it for dancing. There you are. Ray, honey, you sure you won't go with me in the morning? We could change your ticket with Frisco. Uh, it's much better if you slip away quietly and leave me here. Then nobody will suspect us. Well, you'll notice when I drop out of sight, 
I guess it's best. Oh, darling, darling. See you soon, sweetheart. What do you want? What's the matter? Well, I didn't recognize you with that mustache. Oh, Sam, you should have let me know. I was leaving in the morning. Yeah? Where were you going? Well, to Washington, of course, Sam, to meet you. I got the money. This is a great way for me to have to find out. Well, I wrote you yesterday. There's an airmail letter on the way to Washington. You must have passed it. Where's the dough? In the bank, Sam, all safe. How much of it? Nearly all. I, I had to get a few things naturally, tickets and... Sure. Tickets. You, you got the letter, didn't you, explaining what took so long? Tom complicating things and... That's all I got, from the basket of fruit. Well, Tom kept messing around, trying to prove it wasn't an accident. He thought you were murdered. It's nice to know the kid still cares what happens to his old man. Nice to know somebody does. I guess I've given the kid a pretty rotten deal. He's a good boy. Who were you expecting when I came in? Who did you think it was? My girlfriend. I had to have some company when you were away. Her husband's working up in Alaska. I saw you come home with a guy. Oh, with Ray. Oh, that's Karen's boyfriend. You remember Karen. We were playing cards together. When'd you get back? This afternoon. Sam, what's that for? Just to make sure I get my share of the dough. Well, it's a little unnecessary. Until I get my 25,000, you're not going to have one minute alone. I'm tired of being alone. Listen, Sam, why split the money? We can still go to Mexico, can't we? It'd be wonderful there. Marvelous. I read about a little character place called Tasco. With what we've got, we could live in luxury there. No worries, no bothers. It'd be heavenly, Sam. There isn't going to be any Mexico. All I want is my cut of the money. And I'm getting away from here. 
And you. Turn off the lights. I'll be away. Good night, Edna. Have a good sleep. Sam. Yeah? Can I do whatever I want with my share of the money? Sure. Only well, you're having about half as much as expected is going to be quite a blow to Karen's boyfriend. He may not like that. But, my dear boy... I wouldn't want to ruin that pretty scarf. I have feathered myself down for the night in a new robe in pajamas, purchased today particularly for a quiet evening at home. Therefore, I have no intention of forsaking my ivory tower, for love or money. That is, you haven't enough money. Look, do I have to go to work on you again? Tom, it is very unfair of you to constantly threaten to put this on a physical basis. Let's keep it on a mental level. I've got some surprises for you. Very well. What brings you charging into my sanctuary like a young bull at this heathen hour? A little while ago, somebody shot Ray Belden. Three times. He ought to be dead. He certainly should be. Does credit for the achievement go to you? I wouldn't come tell you. Where sins have been confessed to me. Was it Edna that beat you to him? A man. A friend of Edna's. Anyone of our acquaintance? I couldn't recognize him from where I was hiding. Mm -hmm. A mysterious man. Friend of Edna's comes out of the night and kills her sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I find that intriguing. Only I'm beginning to think that Ray wasn't her sweetheart, in spite of what you said. You know, you could be wrong. Anyway, it looks like he wasn't number one boy with her. If you came crashing in here with a few facts, give them to me. Don't stand there theorizing. I was on my way to Ray Belden's to pay him a visit and give him the works. Are you sure you didn't? Just as I started to his door, I heard the shots. I ducked back to the shadows. I saw a man come out. And you couldn't get enough of a look to identify him? But I followed him. He hurried right to Edna's place. He went in, didn't come out. Looks like he's head man. Well, at least you're beginning to be forgiven for disturbing me. Must have something to do with my father's death. I didn't suppose you were otherwise concerned about Ray becoming extinct. What happened tonight makes me think that Ray must not have been her accomplice. Really? Who do you think was? The man I saw tonight. Look, he and Edna murdered Dad. Ray knew too much about it, so the man had to put Ray out of the way. You realize, of course, that you are the most appropriate suspect for the killing of Belden? It's the reason I came to you instead of going to the police. You made quite a fuss, claiming that your father was murdered. Now the widow's most likely collaborator is killed. It would most certainly seem you did it for revenge. I know that. I'm in a spot. Very definitely. It would be extremely foolhardy at the moment for you to go any further. You've come to the right place. I hate to lay low now that we're hot on the trail. Stay out of sight until you get a message from me. This must be handled with the adroitness of which I am capable. Asleep. Then why didn't you stop me? What for? You were a fool to let me take this. I'm going to kill you. Why? You've got your freedom and nearly 25 grand. You want all the money? That's the idea. Because I've got to kill you before you kill me. And because I hate you so much, I despise myself for ever having had anything to do with you. Every time you came near me, I hated it. Whenever you touched me, it made me ill. Everything you did revolted me. I hated the way you let me push you around. The stupid way you sacrificed for me. Everything that would have been beautiful in anyone else, I loathed in you. 
But now I'm going to fix it so I don't ever have to see or think about you again. You're being foolish enough. They'll hang you for it. Because I shot some stranger who broke into my home? Uh -uh. You can't get away with it, Edna. Tom, you'll recognize me. Not what I'm going to leave of you, he won't. Guns have to be loaded. It's a shame. And after that pretty speech. It's all wrong, Edna. I wasn't going to kill you. The money isn't why I came back. All I ever wanted was you, Edna. You were everything to me. Money didn't mean a thing. Except a way to keep you near me. There was a time when I thought I'd die if you ever left me. But now I think I can get along all right without you. You're through with me, and I don't want you anymore. Very nice timing. So all I want now is what's coming to me, my share of the insurance. And you're going to the bank and get it. In cash. I'm taking my full hand. Only 5,000. I see no reason why I should pay for any tickets to Honolulu. Yeah, I guess that polishes off everything between us. Who is it? Cab's here. I'll be right there. Do I need to remind you that neither of us is in any spot to turn the other into the police? I just want to forget you, Sam. Well, have a happy new year. Any place. Goodbye, Sam. So long, Edna. Love may be a little overrated. Is this Crestview 53021? Yes, who's calling? Is Ray there? Yeah, he's here. Who wants him? For a woman, she didn't talk very much. I hope there's enough for the boys to get a tracer on that call. Got something, Lieutenant. Check made out to Ray Belden for 200 bucks. Signed by a woman. Edna Grover. Hmm? There he is, Lieutenant. Here's the landlord. Uh, you the one that found him? No, I was over here this morning. The neighbors have been complaining about how loud he played the radio late at night. That gives us a lot of suspects. No, I warned him several times, but last night was the last straw. About 12 o'clock, they say, the radio was blasting the walls down. That must be about the time he got it. I came over this morning to evict Mr. Belden, to tell him he had to move out. And I found him. You rented the place to anybody yet? Why, no. You got yourself a new tenant. This is just what I've been looking for, Lieutenant. Could I talk to this gentleman for a few minutes? Sure, go ahead. Hello? Yeah? Mm-hmm. Got a tracer on that call, Lieutenant. The phone is listed under the name of Mrs. Edna Grover. Well, I'll let you boys finish up here. I'm going to have a talk with a blonde. Well, hello. Hello, Mrs. Grover. Nice to see you. You're quite a girl. I wonder if it was worth it to the guys who really knew you. What? Something seems to happen to your men. Please, what are you talking about? First it was your husband, Sam, now Belden. Ray? This was no accident. Three shots pumped into him. What are you saying? What's happened to Ray? He's dead.
There's nothing definite that says you did it, but things tie you in. So I'll just have to take you downtown with me. Are you dead? He's dead. I loved him. I loved him so. <gasps> Doesn't live there anymore, huh? Since his father died. I see. Did he leave a forwarding address? This is an old friend of Tom's. I'm very anxious to get in touch with him. It's very important. No. No, it's not possible for him to call me. Well, thanks anyway. Who you got in there? Hey, wait a minute. There's nobody in here but me. Oh, house detective. You look like a better class of hotel. I sincerely hope so. What is this? What do you want? Turn around, please. Turn over toward the wall. Stop. Lean forward with your arms wide and your hands against the wall. Spread your feet far apart. Looking for anything in particular? Cigarettes. You uh, wouldn't be a policeman. No gun. And only a few hundred dollars, I'm deeply disappointed. My heart's breaking. You may now abandon that ridiculous posture. Thanks. Move over and stand looking out that window. It might offer a splendid view nine stories down. Maybe I don't like any of this. Maybe I'll make you use that gun. That is precisely why I have it handy. It would give you a lot of explaining to do to the police. I think the police would listen very attentively. And I strongly urge you to do the same. Right now, or very soon, the discovery of the body of a man murdered last night would interest the police in any possible prospects. What has that got to do with me? I think the police would be delighted to learn that last night you were seen going into the house of one Ray Belden. Three shots later, you were the one who came out. I followed you here knowing pretty well whom I'd find. Because I asked myself, who would kill Ray Belden, then spend the rest of the night in Edna Grover's apartment? And the answer came to me immediately. I thought, why, of course, Sam Grover would do the deed and think no one would ever suspect him because he's supposed to be dead. Did you kill your wife, too? I never heard of any of the people you mentioned, so I guess we've got nothing in common to talk about. Anyway, you can't prove that I'm Sam Grover. Have you forgotten that your fingerprints are on record? Yes, they would make you Sam Grover, Mr. G. They wouldn't make me the murderer of any Ray Belden. Perhaps you have that covered. But there certainly would be considerable interest in you as a man who swindled an insurance company. Hey, wait a minute. I've tried to break it to you gently, but I hope I've made you realize the situation. If I turn you over to the police, you face charges of both fraud and murder. Well, what do you want? Not all. Not everything you have. I wouldn't want to leave you with nothing to lose. You might be moved to do something desperate. How much? Say, uh, $5,000. What am I buying with that? Your absolute freedom, Mr. Grover. How do I know you won't still turn me in after I pay off? How does anyone ever know in cases like this? However, you are blessed, taking less than the usual chance. What break am I getting? Don't you see? 
It'd be very damaging to my excellent reputation as a detective to have to report that I had my hands on a man wanted for fraud and murder and let him slip away. You shall have your liberty, Mr. Grover. And at a very moderate price, I maintain. I haven't got the money here. Mm. I'm fairly certain of that. I followed you to the bank this morning, but you got in before I could park my car. I presume you put the money in a safety deposit box. Naturally, I didn't want all that money with me over the weekend. And the place doesn't open until Monday morning. I shall be patient. In the meantime, I have the keys to the box as my security. Yeah. Say, am I buying any information with my five grand? And who claims they saw me coming out of Ray Belden? Huh? Prepare for a shock. Your son. Huh? You'll be relieved to learn that he didn't recognize you. Does he... Does he know I'm still alive? I... I thought it was kinder to leave him in ignorance. Perhaps it's better if he thinks his old man is dead. I feel a certain responsibility to the lad. I rather like him. I'll think of something to tell him, and I shall drop back to see how you are. Naturally, you could run out on me and leave town, but that way you'd be letting me collect all the money. I'll be here. Remember, you can't open that box without my signature. For that matter, I don't even know what name you used. We definitely need each other. United we stand. Divided we fall. Why don't you want to tell us, Mrs. Grover? What was there between you and Ray Belden? Why did you phone him this morning? To say goodbye. I was going away. We know. You had a ticket to Honolulu. You were all set for a fast getaway after you killed him. I didn't kill him. He had a ticket to Honolulu, too. For a boat a week later. You didn't want him to follow you, so you shot him. He was making you pay off for something. You wanted to get rid of him. That's only human. The check was for what it said, for dancing lessons. I think you're on the wrong beat. If she shot him, why would she phone his place? To make sure he was dead? But what about the gun? Remember, the bullets in Ray Belden's body came from the gun we found in your bedroom. I told you I didn't know anything about the gun. Well, how do you think it got in your bedroom? Tell us. Somebody put it there last night while I was out. I went to the movies. Somebody planted it to make it look like you did the killing. Huh. Tom Grove. Who? Tom Grove, my husband's son. Mr. Hutton knows. Tom didn't think his father's death was an accident. He thought I had something to do with Sam's death. Tom threatened to kill me. Maybe you did murder your husband. And Ray Belden knew about it. That was why you put him out of the way. I didn't kill my husband, and I didn't have any reason to kill Ray. The last time I saw Ray, he was alive. You say you were home last night at the time he was killed. Who can prove that? Was somebody with you? Your last night in town. A girlfriend? Any friend? A relative? No, nobody. I was alone. Pardon speaking. Okay. The fingerprints on the gun. They're hers. That ought to be enough for now. That's plenty. Uh, you can come in now. Mrs. Grover, your salvation. This is Mr. Nicholas, the bail bondsman. Mrs. Grover. How do you do? That's a wonderful question. As soon as I read of your predicament, I came right over. I'm sure you'd like to be out of this oppressive atmosphere as quickly as possible. For what? To go to Ray's funeral? After that, what's left for me? Anywhere. That's absurd. You can't give up now just because Ray's gone. You'll get over the shock in a day or so. Mrs. Grover, you and I are armed with certain facts the police aren't aware of. Unless you've told them. Told them what? Who killed Ray Belden? You know? You know I didn't do it? Yes, my dear. Why should you pay for someone else's crime? You do as I say, and I think we'll be able to get you released on bail. I presume that you're prepared to pay a reasonable fee. 
Between the two of you, this is going to cost me plenty. But it'll be worth it. Thanks very much. No, no, I didn't want to talk to him. I just want to know if he still worked there. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Could you get me a messenger, please? Uh, room 911. The blonde widow appeared before Judge Honnold dressed in a symphony of black with matching accessories. As she walked out of the courtroom, she smiled sweetly for the reporter, still proclaiming... Look, honey, I'm in no mood to listen to descriptions of Edna. Just give me a quick briefing. Edna's going to plead guilty to shooting Ray Belden. Guilty? When she didn't do it? The charge is reduced to manslaughter. She's out on bail. After all she's done. Her story is she shot Ray Belden in self-defense. Don't you see, Marilyn? Belden knew that she and the guy I saw murdered Dad. That's why he had to be eliminated. Edna's covering for the real killer because she'll have a better chance with the jury. Are you going to phone Stewart? Sure. He's supposed to let me know how he's doing, trailing by Mr. X. Is there Tom Grover at this address? That's me. You sign this receipt, please. Uh -huh. Thanks. Maybe that's from Stewart. What is it, Tom? Five thousand dollars. A note that says. Just forget about your father and be happy. Hey, messenger! The way you work? My brain is always active, Edna. Delighted to see you, my dear. I haven't any time for polite conversation. I came here for one thing. I want you to find Sam. Just when we've found a way to save you from conviction for a crime you didn't commit, don't, for heaven's sakes, go out and do something to hang yourself. He killed a man I loved. Nothing you do now can bring Ray back. Pray let's be practical. Sam being guilty of fraud and murder is undoubtedly a desperate and dangerous man to corner. Not my cup of tea. All you have to do is find out where he is. I'll take it from there. It's nearly $10,000, Stuart. I'm not even tempted. The money you gave me has made life so luxurious I have every intention of keeping myself alive to enjoy it. I have a feeling you don't want me to find Sam. I definitely do not, for your own sake. Forget Sam. Try to forget Ray. You have a chance for freedom and a fine future. They say everybody has to pay for their sins. Funny, I always thought you were the man who collected. You've paid your debt, dear girl. Now life owes you some happiness. Let me out before you pass the plate. another bidder who's willing to top your offer. Uh, I don't believe we'd better talk on the phone. I'll drop over and see you later. Wants to be sure you're in. I'll be here. Makes sense to me. We'll pick up the killer of Belden and Grover. Not bad. Think you're gonna park here, do you? Well, my fare will be right out. There ain't an open spot in the block. You may need that for a fine. What do you think you're on the street? Don't look so grim, Mr. G. You're in a very enviable position. 
Yeah, I'm in a great spot. Less than Stewart to them. Or bargaining. Edna's finances are radically depleted, whereas you have 25,000. I had five grand hidden in here that you didn't find. It went to my son. Still, I... It's amazing you could be such a skunk and smell so nice. Your cologne leaves a trail up elevated and down home. I've got your husband for you. You name the figure. You kill me. So now I'm gonna give you just what he got. He's no good to me. <laughs> Dad, I didn't know. I brought the police. It's better this way. I'd rather pay the law than hemp. Blackmail may be the lightest rap he'll take. Me? I'll get the full treatment. Are you still around? Didn't your bear come out yet? Yeah, she came out. <laughs> 